Hi, my name is Brittany Buckridge, and today I will be talking to you about the micturition process, otherwise known as the urination process. Whether an individual is involuntarily or voluntarily urinating, there are four basic steps that are followed in order to allow an individual to urinate. The first step is the filling of the bladder. The second is signals return to the bladder. The third is the excitation of the detrusor muscle. And the fourth is the relaxation of the urethral sphincter, whether that is the internal or external urethral sphincter. Here you see a detailed picture of the bladder and all of the steps that are taken to urinate, which we will go into more detail in a moment. The first step in this process is the filling of the bladder. When the bladder becomes filled with about 200 milliliters of fluid or more, the stretch receptors become excited in the bladder wall. Afferent signals also transmit to the spinal cord. The second step is where the signals return to the bladder. Parasympathetic fibers in the pelvic nerve return efferent signals from the spinal segments S2 and S3. The third step is the excitation of the detrusor muscle. Output from the ganglion excites the detrusor and relaxes the internal urethral sphincter, which is the fourth step. Once the internal urethral sphincter is opened, the urine will pass involuntarily if it is not inhibited by the brain. An individual can either involuntarily or voluntarily pass the urine. The involuntary micturition reflex would be as described before. Voluntary control is just a little bit different. During voluntary control, the micturition center in the pons receives signals from the stretch receptors. When an individual is ready to urinate, the pons return signals to the spinal interneurons that excite the detrusor and relax the internal urethral sphincter. And then the urine is voided. However, if it is untimely to urinate when an individual feels the need to, the signals from the cerebrum excite the spinal interneurons that keep the external urethral sphincter contracted. Urine, therefore, is retained in the bladder until it is time to urinate. When it becomes timely to urinate again, the signals from the cerebrum inhibit the sacral neurons that keep the external sphincter closed. Then, when it is relaxed, the urine can pass. I hope you have learned about the micturition process or the urination process. Thank you.